Wonderful. Let's go to God in an attitude of prayer, shall we? God, we come before you this morning to lay ourselves down before you, to worship you, O oh God. You who created us and called us good and loved us enough to sacrifice everything, including your Son, so that we could have a relationship with you, we thank you. We come before you to worship and honor and praise your name, O oh God, and we ask that you send your Spirit down into this place. We ask that it be a whirlwind that passes through us and fills us with your fire. Fill us with your passion and your love so that we can be your disciples. Give us the wisdom and discernment to understand what you would have us learn this day. For God, I pray that the words that I speak this morning not be my own, but may they be yours, O oh God. Use me and speak, for you are the one we have come to worship today. You are the one we have come to learn from. So God, we pray that you fill us, guide us, love us, and protect us. In Jesus' name, we lift all these things to you. Amen. So, I decided to do a three-part sermon series, and it is titled, What is Love? And it ties into the three general rules that John Wesley uh, attributes to the United Methodist Church as rules to live by, and this week... Uh, we're talking about do good. Uh, next week we'll talk about do no harm. And then the following week is stay in love with God. So let us go into the word and let us go into this message this morning. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay our lives down for our brothers and our sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. You see, every year at annual conference, this big meeting where all the churches in an area gather together, individuals who have felt the call of God to ordain ministry, whether that call is to be a deacon or an elder in the United Methodist Church, and wish to be in full membership with that annual conference, stand up before what is known as the executive session, the board, if you will, of annual conference, meaning all of the ordained clergy and they are then asked 19 questions by the bishop. Now, I won't go into all 19 questions, but those questions penned by John Wesley are important, and I would like this morning to look at one and its follow-up question. Do you know the general rules of the church, and will you keep them? So you all come here to Royal Oak Community United Methodist Church, do you know the general rules of the United Methodist Church? Can anyone here tell them to me? I see no hands. It's okay. I didn't know them until I went to seminary either, so it's okay. But they are, in modern rephrasing, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. These general rules of the United Methodist Church will be our focus for the next three weeks. Just three simple rules. It's Wesley's way of expressing the first and second greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Everything else is contained in just these two commandments. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God are simple words seldom put to the test 
But these words, when lived out in this life, could transform the entire earth. This week, we're engaging in the rule, do good. This rule is actually the second rule listed by John Wesley. And Wesley didn't list the phrase, do good. He actually went on to explain in depth what he meant by his understanding of do good. It refers to being merciful when in power and doing good to everyone. According to Wesley, it looked like giving food to the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting or helping the sick or imprisoned. Wesley reiterated that one was to do so whether or not they felt like it, and that doing so was important work for helping love those often overlooked by society. And finally, Wesley encountered others to run with patience the race before them and to show evidence of their desire to have Christ in their life. These are all things we try to attribute in our daily lives here. We just didn't know that they were a rule by John Wesley. We know that the writer of John's letter, 1 John, was writing to a community that was fighting amongst themselves and on the verge of separation. John's letter desired to unite that community together with an understanding of what they were called to do. The author did this using the love commandment as a way to unite everyone under the cause of loving God and neighbor, including each other in that room. In this morning's passage, we find the letter writer specifically telling the community to live like Christ did with their words and their actions, because anyone who is not trying to live that way is being influenced by evil and darkness. The letter writer calls out to the audience not to hate, because it does not come from God, but to love instead. Not just any love that is to be emulated, it's that love that is supposed to be sacrificial, that sacrificial love that we see when Jesus gave up his life for us. The hearers of this letter were being called to make sacrifices for the good of the work of God. Then the passage tells the hearers of this letter to share if they had have things that others need. It then goes on to talk about listening to the convictions of the heart as they reflect the will of God within themselves. So if they are doing God's will, they will know it. And on the flip side, if they're acting against God's will, they will feel a conviction inside of them, letting them know that they are not, that that is not God's desire for them at that time. The chapter and passage that we read this morning then conclude reminding those hearers of the letter of the good news that God lives in them because they choose to live like Christ and allow their hearts to convict them when they fall away from the will of God. So what does that mean for us in general? Well, John Wesley echoes this message by doing good, by showing the love of Christ to all. He lived a very structured and intentional life with strict routine and minimalism, allowing him to model taking care of others. Even though he himself did not have a huge surplus, he modeled caring for others first and foremost in his life by giving any excess that he had away, which was him living out, do good, by living as he believed Christ did, who gave everything away and never retained anything. Even when he had very little, he found ways to cut out the unnecessary so that it might be given to others in need. Remember, he died with 17 cents to his name. But he didn't stop there, John Wesley. In a community of people known as Methodists, John Wesley led them to small accountability groups structured to provide an avenue for growth as disciples of Jesus Christ. Any time a new group is formed, of course, there's always the threat of the development of division, of people not getting along. In order for these to become sources of strength rather than weakness through division, Wesley made sure that their purpose was different, taking discipleship into a deeper and more intimate setting. 
than possible with a larger ministry setting. By incorporating the message of the most important commandment into a plan for discipleship, John Wesley was intentional about keeping the Word of God front and center in everyone's lives. We are called to keep God's commands. Looking at the commandments through John Wesley's rule of do good helps us to understand how to treat one another according to this commandment of loving God and our neighbor. What does it mean for us? Well, in verse 18 of this morning's passage, Little children, let us love, do, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. One of the ways that we can love in truth is by committing to live a life that is a reflection of Jesus' life. Life as he walked here on the earth. In making this commitment and taking the necessary steps to prepare, it becomes important to let yourself and your own desires go. Sometimes you don't get your way, nor does it go like you want it to, but everyone must be united behind this lifestyle and hold each other accountable so that the church can do good, and all the while not doing harm to itself or to others. And doing harm is what, I, of course, I will talk about next week. And one of the ways that we can love in action is by making the lifestyle change to be committed to working as a body, not as individual parts. We must be willing to act on the needs that we see and address them as a whole body, united, working together for the good of the whole. It requires us to see the needs of our community out these doors, the world, and even within these four walls. We can hold each other up, support each other, and work together for everyone's success. In the end, if we cannot find the bond of love in God and in our neighbor, we too can fall apart and crumble, and divide away, we then become nothing but an empty building. But if we can hear the words of John Wesley being supported by scripture this morning, maybe the good news is that God can do amazing things when everyone is on board and working together as a team serving God. God is with us and living in us and convicts us of when we fall away from doing good in the world. So let us be united in love, brothers and sisters, for God and for our love of our neighbors so that we can go unified in strength to go out and serve and give as we are reminded to do in this morning's passage. Amen and amen. I now invite you to stand.